Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord gave me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you Scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God. Why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them. And for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, my God, my God, why have you A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. with you and And with with your your spirit. spirit the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew glory glory to you Lord one of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you they paid him 30 pieces of silver and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him and one another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It'd be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all might have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, You will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. 
Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you cannot watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged to sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, Do what you have come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, And he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels. But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against me, a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days we build it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, For us. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. 
I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with the price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And then he was accused by the chief priests and elders. He made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one of do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called the Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head, and a red and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed, and kept striking him on the head. 
And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who was destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from that cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down to the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one was calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after this resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Now there were many women, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his tomb that had been hewn from a rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathering before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this is Apostle, while still alive, said, After three days, Pilate 
Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters of St. John the Baptist, and all here at the Skaggs Catholic Center, I'd like to share with you a few thoughts about entering into this Holy Week. For those of you who were able to receive a palm on this Palm Sunday, I'd like you to take it in your hands or perhaps look at it as I share some reflections, because this is a sign of victory. A sign that we say that no matter what, sin or death or any kind of suffering, especially the suffering during this time, this crazy time of the COVID virus, we believe in the victor of Jesus, who is the victor, the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. This is our pledge that everything will turn out just fine. Friends, as we enter into Holy Week, we follow Jesus Christ during the most important moments of his life. We receive this palm because it is a pledge of peace that only Jesus Christ can give. And so as we journey, let us think about where he started this Holy Week. What did he do during this Holy Week? And what was the final outcome of this Holy Week? The first point. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. This is a very significant place, a mere thousand paces from the temple in Jerusalem. It's where the temple priests and their families lived so that they could travel back and forth to that holy place. In the Mount of Olives, a place where abundant number of olive trees grow, it is a place obviously where there is an abundance of oil made. Oil for the Jewish people signified mercy. It signified a gladdening. We hear in the psalm, number 103, that he may make the face cheerful with oil. Perhaps we don't put olive oil on our faces, but we do, what, put creams, because we want our faces and our whole bodies to feel glistening glad. But oil is also made for lamps. And as we know, the Lord commanded that the clearest oil made from the purest of olive trees should be offered to him in the holy temple. Oil is also used for healing of sorrows. Perhaps we might remember that during this time. And of course, it signifies the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's used in many of the sacraments. Remember that glorious reading from Luke chapter 10, when the Samaritan poured oil and wine into the injured one who was stranded along the roadside. But there's more to this. As Jesus is standing on the Mount of Olives, he sends two of his disciples saying, go into the village as opposite of you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her, untie them and bring them to me. It is clear that Jesus wants to involve us and his disciples to be ambassadors of mercy. He says in John's Gospel, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. The disciples 
and our efforts signify God's love for the world, and through their self-sacrificing actions of love, they will share through the church, and so will be through this parish, healing for our world, because we love the world. What did the ass and the cult signify? <laughs> they signify irrational people. The ass was considered a stupid animal, senseless, tied up by the bonds of ignorance and sin, and it needed to be untied, unbounded, loosened up by God's teaching. That's why it's so important for us to hear the word of God, not only today, but all the time. Maybe perhaps during this time of sort of solitude, pick up the Bible, read a gospel, Open up your minds to the healing and loving message of Jesus. But there's more. There's more to it. Once opened up to the healing message of Jesus, like the disciples, we are to go out and heal the world. Our bishop has asked us during this Holy Week, sometime during this Holy Week, perhaps you and I can bring a can or two or three, a can of food to the parish so that we not only pray for those who are hurting, but we actually feed and comfort those who are hurting. The disciples did go out, and so do we, as Jesus orders us to do so. They brought the ass and the cult and laid their cloaks over these animals, and Jesus sat on these animals. The second part, when Jesus enters Jerusalem, the Jewish people know exactly what's happening. We hear in, in Matthew chapter 21, Behold, your king comes to you meek and riding on an ass and a colt, the fold of a beast of burden. Jewish people who knew the Old Testament very well, two things should ring out, and it actually should ring out in our own hearts too. First of all, they knew exactly what was going on. Jesus was fulfilling the promises and the prophecies about the Messiah. They weren't surprised. We hear in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, the Messiah will come riding humbly on an ass, and yet triumphant and victorious he shall be. He shall command peace to all the nations and have universal dominion. The crowds, in response to knowing that Jesus is the Messiah, make such a noise that it is like an earthquake. Funny that we should just have an earthquake a couple of days ago, right? In 1 Kings, the Jewish crowds will make such a noise that the earth will literally shake, describing the coronation of King Solomon who rides on his father's mule. And the crowd will yell at the top of their lungs, Long live Solomon, King David's beautiful son. There is such an uproar in Jerusalem that literally they feel the earth split by their noise. Likewise, in Matthew, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a mule to the acclamation of the people. And they say not something about Solomon, they say, Hosanna to the son of David. And the whole city was stirred with excitement. Every Mass, we say the same thing. Hosanna to the son of David. And our hearts should shake with joy as we raise our palm branches. Finally, and grab these branches good and tight. We're told 
The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them along the road. I wonder why we, why they did this. Aquinas says it was because they wanted to honor him as the Messiah. So when we grab palms and we spread them and remember them, we honor Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who suffers to heal the entire world. Brothers and sisters, the Jewish people knew this very, very well. Another quick story. In the Old Testament, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, foreign invaders had come and trashed all of Israel. They broke the city walls and they desecrated the temple. It would be like someone coming into a Catholic church and performing pagan worship. They persecuted the Jews. They didn't allow them to practice according to the Mosaic law. And they literally practiced pagan worship on the high altar. To make a long story short, the Maccabean family rose up in revolt and they won the day. In celebration, the Jewish people built beautiful little houses to celebrate the event out of palm branches. So the palm is a sign of victory. Friends, we are about to enter into Holy Week. A time, yes, when we remember Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world to an awful death, but three days later, he's victorious. As we hold on to these palms, these pledges of victory, these pledges of peace, these pledges of God's mercy, May we all together follow the King of Kings as he enters into the holy city, knowing that we with him will win eternal life. stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, not substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. Hold on. We'll let the bell speak. Let's try it again. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us bring our needs and petitions to the Father. For the Church, as we begin our solemn remembrance of the events of our salvation, may God grant us a spirit of humility and devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the repentance and conversion of all hearts that have turned away from the Lord, and for the salvation of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who struggle with their faith, by God's grace, may they be renewed in faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those infected with or recovering from the coronavirus, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, May they come to share in the fullness of eternal life in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, the repose of the soul of Lucy Brown, the repose of the soul of Margaret Gonzalez, and the needs of our St. John the Baptist community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, Thank you for hearing our prayers. Answer them in your goodness, your mercy, and your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. 
And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please bow your head and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.